In this video series we are building a ground station for a geostationary satellite and try to talk to a Swiss guy in Antarctica. It is a bonus series and not directly related to the regular topics of the channel. It is strongly suggested to start watching at the beginning of the playlist now showing in the top right. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. You did not get an update for quite some time. This has an expensive reason. I fried my power amplifier and had to get a new one. Now it's here and we can continue. Like last time, I was not lazy during these weeks. The most important part was a visit to the time and frequency lab at Neuchâtel University when I got an invitation from subscriber Etienne to compare my GPSDO with their atomic clocks, for sure I said yes. But this is stuff for a later episode because it was so exciting. I deviate. This time I ordered the power amplifier from SG Labs in Bulgaria. I already wanted to get my first amplifier from there, but during Corona they were not able to ship. So I ordered a similar one in China. Both have around 30 dB gain and a maximum of 20 watts output. The Chinese runs on 12 to 24 volts and has a built-in boost converter. The Bulgarian runs on 24 to 28 volts. So I had to add an external boost converter to replace the Chinese with the Bulgarian. But what happened with the Chinese? I did some testing in my lab when the doorbell rang. Unfortunately, I did not completely switch off my test installation. I just switched it to receive and thought I get a delivery and will be back in less than five minutes. But it was a colleague who came for a visit. When I came back to the lab, I saw that the ampere meter showed a quite high current. When I touched the PA, it did not pass the Swiss sky test and I burned my fingers. We can have a quick look. It does not look horrible. A few parts are partly unsoldered and also the solder around the power transistor was fluid for some time. So the temperature was at around 300 degrees at least. This is why the device will go to the engineering graveyard. It lost its life for my better understanding of the world. I can only assume what happened. Both PAs draw quite some power without any output signal. I do no more remember how much the old one needed. The new consumes 0.5 ampere while idle. On 25 volts, this is around 13 watts. And without cooling, they can get hot. Maybe this was the reason, maybe something else happened. Anyway, the new amplifier has an advantage over the old one. It switches automatically on and off at a certain level of the input signal. You can also switch it with a push to talk input, which will not be used for the satellite because there you work duplex. So the new one should be protected against overheating in idle. But during transmission, it consumes up to 40 watts. This is why after the first tests, I added two things, a fan and a temperature meter. Now I know that after about 10 minutes with 10 watts output, it reaches a temperature of around 55 degrees in my lab. That is okay with me. So this problem is solved. The next one was that my Adam Pluto did no more react. Also here, I do not precisely know why. But the second one works now with my modification for an external 25 MHz reference provided by the Leo Bodnar GPSDO. I added an attenuator to get the reference signal to below 2 volts pp. Like that, I should have a stable transmitter. To finish the transmission path, I purchased a used Sennheiser GSP350 headset. It is made for gamers and seems to be comfortable. And, most important, it has a USB connection. I did not want to have 2.4 GHz Bluetooth around my high power amplifier. The antenna also needed some attention. After my failure with my first try, I was contacted by Achim. He offered help and, because he was involved in the QO100 project and built some stations, his input was valuable. 
According to his analysis, I had to focus on the antenna direction, particularly on the elevation of the potty. Because I had to move it upwards to fit the diameter of the potty, it did no more point precisely to the focus of the dish. And he told me that I had to do my trials with my LNB attached, not by listening to the web SDR. If I hear the satellite, I know the dish points in the right direction also for transmitting. So I calculated an angle of 2.5 degrees and printed a new attachment for the antenna. I saw that some dishes offer a different mounting which should leave room for the potty without modifications. So maybe this is a better solution for you. Now I had to combine the potty with an LNB. Another colleague made this plastic part on his lathe for me. And I'm sure it could also be 3D printed. First I wanted to cut the front of the LNB, but now I'm happy with what I have. The copper tube fits snugly into the cone and Mike, the inventor of the potty, told me that this is okay. So I have an excellent combined antenna. The only thing I would do differently is to cut the copper tube before soldering the antenna. Like that it would be a little shorter. Now we still have one problem to solve before the next try. The stabilization of the receiving frequency. The plan was to inject a 25 MHz signal into the LNB. But for my first trial I wanted to use another solution. The Q0100 transmits beacons on three frequencies. Two in a special Morse code and one on 10489.750 in frequency shift keying or FSK. The Adam Pluto, together with the SDR console software, can receive the whole band with all beacons and all signals transmitted by stations. A software add-on receives the middle beacon and, because it knows that it must be on 10489.750, it can correct all receiving frequencies. Like that it should be stabilized without any additional cost. This is software-defined radio at its best. So everything is ready. And even the weather is better now. Time for a next trial on the roof. The 80 cm dish is still waiting and we can start. Nearly. We have to do some math in the SDR console. First we have to enable higher frequencies above 10 GHz and second we have to solve the problem of the different frequencies used in this project. Let's use an example. We want to communicate on 10489.700. The band plan shows that we have to transmit on 2400-200 to get a signal on this frequency. From former videos we know that the LNB translates the 10 GHz signal down to around 740 MHz. This 9750 makes that the Pluto listens at 739.7 MHz while SDR console displays 10489.700 as receiving frequency. This 8089.5 makes that the Pluto transmits at 2400.200, while SDR console displays 10489.750 as transmit frequency. Now we couple the two and we have a very comfortable transceiver. Wherever we set our receiving frequency, the transmitter is also there. Cool. Enough talked. Let's hit the transmit button and listen to the signal. Unfortunately, it's not easy for me to film the whole thing. Test. One, two, three. One, two, three. Test, test, test. Hotel Bravo 9, Bravo Lima Alpha. But you should get an impression. Really, I hear my voice from the satellite. Precisely on the same frequency. Just delayed by the 72,000 km travel distance. All viewers remember that this was the same when we used satellites for telephone conversations between the US and Europe in the 80s. It needs some concentration to listen to our delayed voice while talking. So the whole thing works. As a general rule, my transmitted signal must not be stronger than the beacons. This is the case with around 8 watts for the moment. So my amplifier is big enough. 
also because my antenna cable is only 50 cm long, of course. During the first evening, I was able to talk to four different stations in the UK, Germany and France. I had to stop because it became dark and I did not have the fan mounted for the first tests. I did not want to fry another PA. One of the stations, by the way, is a viewer of this channel. So we are much closer to the initial goal, to talk to the Swiss sky in Antarctica. During the next weeks, some tests and improvements will be made, and maybe I will find Roman from Antarctica, somewhere in space to talk to him. I hope he has a little time for me, because I assume it is now dark for nearly the whole day where he is. To keep the experiment interesting, I ordered a 120 and a 60 cm dish. So stay tuned if you are interested in this comparison. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now, especially frying PAs and Plutos. Bye!